welcome back to It's a Dog's Tale. When we think about adopting a rescue dog, we usually think about Battersea or the RSPCA or whatever. But did you know that abroad there are many rescue homes created by animal lovers whose dogs are desperate to find good homes? Well, today's show highlights the wonderful work by one woman and her 16-year-old son in Greece. Coming up on today's show, we hear about the amazing work of Sue Deeth in Greece. We meet new owners, Lisa, Cheryl and Julie. We hear the story of the adorable Hope, all coming up. Sue Deeth moved to the Greek island of Sikinthos 11 years ago along with her children. She began by helping out at a local animal rescue and following a conversation with a lady she met at a vet's, decided to set up a sanctuary of her own. There are very few rescue centres on the island, so the chances of a new home are virtually nil. So I asked her where she gets the animals from, and she says people bring them to her to get them help, or the strays, the found in bins even, or even people tie them to her gate, or even throw them over the fence into her garden. So I was asking how many dogs she actually has at any one time, and she was telling me that she actually, the most she's had so far has been 96. Can you imagine that? They all live together with her in her own home, along with her own cats and dogs. She's an absolutely amazing woman. She really is. She says that she just helps as many as she can, as, as many as need her help, and you know, she just can't say no, really. But she funds all the vet's care herself, and along with help from her supporters and from the doctors as well. So it must be very difficult for her at times. Each newcomer is welcomed readily into the pack, and they all sleep together, play together, and they even groom each other. And Sue actually hand rears all the tiny little puppies and bottle feeds them. And of course, this develops a very close bond with the pups so that they actually grow up to be very loving and affectionate dogs. You can see in these video clips just how happy all the dogs are and the genuine affection that's developed between them and Sue. Her daughter and grandchildren visit regularly, so the dogs are all very well integrated with small children. Once the dogs have been nursed back to health, Sue publishes their details on her Facebook page with photographs and videos to attract potential new owners. And often holidaymakers will fall in love with a stray and Sue and Ollie will take care of them until they're ready to be moved to their new home. Every potential owner is home checked before an adoption is agreed, so I asked Sue how this was carried out given that many of the adoptions are carried out online. Well apparently there are contacts in the UK uh, of dog lovers and they make contact with volunteer home checkers in that area. Sue told me that so far this year she has sent out 101 dogs and three kittens to their new homes, which is absolutely fantastic, and there are another 19 all ready to go. So in the last five years she has actually rehomed over 600 dogs to the UK and to Holland, although she does mainly concentrate mainly on the UK now. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Before they leave for the new homes, all the dogs have to have their rabies vaccination in order to get their pet passport to travel within the EU. The pups have to be at least 12 weeks old and it's nearly three weeks after that before they're free to go too. All the dogs are wormed, treated for fleas and also microchipped and the adult dogs are all tested for t sand fly and tick fever and they're also neutered or spayed. I met up with three new owners who recently adopted dogs from Sue, which is Teddy, Spud and Chip. So I asked them how they got to hear about Sue and her work. I first heard about Sue Deeth on holiday in Zante about four years ago. We just had our little dog put to sleep and I was missing her and we went for an holiday and the hotel grounds was absolutely full of little puppies running around. So I kept picking them up and wanting one and the lady that worked behind the bar said I know a lady that rescues dogs, cats out here so she passed all Sue's details on to me and came back off the holidays and got straight in touch with Sue Deeth and found a little doggy that I liked called Mavis but unfortunately she wasn't strong enough and didn't make it but Sue came up with Teddy then so we rescued Teddy. I first heard about Sue from a friend of mine uh, who I've known for quite a few years and on her Facebook she put um, her new little dog which she had rescued from Sue in Greece. I fell in love with him um, and then about a year later she posted little Chip on my Facebook page. Um, and I don't know what it was at the time, um, but I fell in love with him and immediately we decided to rescue him. 
I first heard about Sue through Cheryl, my sister-in-law, um, who adopted a, a Greeky the year before. We adopted Spuddy. So what was it that made them want to adopt from Greece when there are many homeless dogs in this country also needing a home? This is what they said. We adopted from Greece because it's saving dogs from cruelty or being tied up in trees and it's <coughs> so cool out there, I just had to save one and I didn't want to buy a new puppy, I just want to save, really. I wanted to adopt from Greece um, as I probably would have adopted from any country. Um, I, we already have two uh, dogs that we've adopted from the UK. In my view, it doesn't matter where the dog is in the world, if it needs help and it needs support and it needs caring for, then they deserve that. Uh, adopting any dog anywhere isn't going to change the world, but for that particular dog, that dog's life is going to change. Um, and as I say, I have no preference. I wouldn't automatically always adopt from Greece. Um, I would adopt from anywhere in the world. Um, there are so many dogs that are ill-treated, abused, abandoned and left to die. Um, and it's just nice that people are able to help some of these dogs and also give them a new life. Well, my husband fell in love with, with Chip, Cheryl's. Cheryl's dog and we said if she saw any little puppies that were like Chip um, to let us know and we, we might be interested. Given that there are so many adorable dogs at Sue Sanctuary, how did they choose the dogs from just photographs and videos? Sue gave me a second choice of Teddy, a little white ball of fluff and I couldn't refuse so yes we took Teddy on. Chip was found initially by a vet out there, I believe his name is Spiros. Um, Sue takes a lot of the dogs there that need medical help um, and he's a very, very understanding vet for Sue um, and helps her look after the animals. He apparently um, found Chip in the garden next door to his and Chip was very, very tiny. Um, it was only a matter of weeks old. He brought him to his surgery to work with him and at that point Sue came in with another rescue dog and Spiros asked Sue if she could possibly take this little one and find him a, a, a new home because he would have died left alone, he was far too young. Some dogs have very, very sorry stories behind them so I asked them if they knew what their dog's history was and this is what they said. We don't really know a lot about Teddy's background, only that his mum was tied to a tree in an olive grove, uh, just left on a piece of chain, no food, no drink, red hot, she was, and Sue can't rescue her, the, were, the owners will not part with her. There were no brothers and sisters um, of Chips around, um, and certainly no parents, so he wouldn't have survived how he'd come to get there, nobody knows. Um, it could be that he's, he's, he's wandered away from a litter that's been born out there, as a lot of them are. Um, it could be that he was just abandoned on the side of a road and, has, and found his way there, but he certainly wouldn't have survived. Sue, being the kind of person she is, took him in. Um, he had an eye infection at the time, so they, they treated him for his eye infection. Um, his photo, as I say, appeared on my Facebook and we fell in love with him. Um, so that's basically all we know from him. Um, the, you know, the truth is he wouldn't, he wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Sue and the vet. Buddy was found um, with his, well, his brothers and sisters. Um, his mother was tied to a tree. Uh, she's been there quite a few years, I think. Um, and the owners just kept her chained to this tree. And she had, I think she had a few litters of puppies in the past. And the other pups were just roaming about. Um, and so managed to rescue them eventually. Um, and the rest is history, really. It's quite some distance to travel from Greece, so I asked them how the dogs were actually imported to England and what the process was. The start of how to bring them over to this country, um, we pay for inoculations, we pay for the passport, and then we pay for the travel over here by ferry. Sue has van drivers that come over and deliver, such as olive oil and 
dogs, cats, they come over and do drops at different stations and you have to meet them at the closest one to you or them. And we paid the driver when we meet them for the dogs. But for the inoculations we paid so through PayPal so she has the money instant. And then they come through all the borders and things on a passport. Initially, Sue kept him over there because he had to have all his inoculations. He also has to be over there, I think it was 21 days after his rabies inoculation before they could travel. And Sue has uh, people who help her out immensely over there, um, who bring the, the pups and dogs that she's got homes for in the UK um, over in a van that's got the dogs in crates. Um, so basically it's like a three day journey for them, but obviously they're fed and watered and looked after by the volunteer that's bringing them over. Um, we then met um, the people that had fetched Chip over, we met them at the service station to pick Chip up um, and that's, that's basically how a lot of the dogs come over and they meet the new owners at various places where they can stop at. Hopefully a lot of it at the time it's quite near to where you live as well. Um, Spuddy was brought over with his brothers and sisters by Land and Sea. Um, Sarah Roachford, uh, a good friend of Sue's, her uh, uh, job to do that. She, she brought them over in the back of a, um, a minibus in the crates and they were all together. Obviously very smelly when they got here. Uh, they've been travelling three days. And, uh, but just adorable um, when they got it was so lovely to meet them when they finally arrived. We had to travel all the way down to Brighton, almost to Brighton to pick him up. And all the way back in the car, he just sat in a towel as good as gold. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was his journey over. Yeah. I asked them all how their new dogs are settling in and what their lives are like now. The life he's got now is spoiled rotten. He lives with three other dogs. Well, he did. We've just lost Seth in February that he adored. Uh, he was a bit lost for the first few weeks, but he's getting there now and he loves it. He's spoiled rotten. He sleeps on my bed. He sleeps anywhere he wants. He's always laying on his back with his bits out. Uh, yeah, he's just loved. And now I'm going to rescue another one. <laughs> Well, for us, Chip uh, is a dog that throws himself at life. From the moment we had him, he made us laugh. He has little ways, quirky ways, um, that we have a laugh and always say, oh, he does that because he's Greek. But he's such a loving dog. He took to the other dogs in our family immediately. Um, he wasn't quiet, he was very boisterous, very playful, um, let everybody know he'd arrived. Um, his, his character uh, has, has been in incredible. To, to say the sort of start he's had in life, um, you, couldn't, you couldn't wish for a, a better temperament in a dog. Um, yeah, he's got a wonderful life now with, with me and my husband and my daughter. Uh, he comes to work with me every, nearly every day. I've got a barber shop and uh, he comes up to the shop and greets the customers. Uh, everybody loves him. Um, yeah, he's, he's, just, he's just wonderful. Loves his walks. Uh, he made us get out more as well to do walks and get fit. So, he's, yeah, he's, he's adorable. I don't, we'll be lost without him. I asked each of the new owners if they would recommend adopting a dog from overseas and this is what they told me. I definitely recommend other people to adopt from abroad. There's so many poor little animal or puppies and dogs that are just abandoned and stray dogs that need good homes. Um, Sue, I think Sue's totally inundated with, with them over there, so definitely if you if you if you can adopt. I would do definitely again. Blood number one. <laughs> but uh, he's a handful so <laughs> Certainly, for, for, for us we'd obviously recommend to people um, if you are looking for a dog not only to look in the UK dog homes but also to look further afield because there's many dogs like Chip um, that, that are not going to survive and it's only through the goodness of people like Sue that they, they're saved in a way. Um, but 
Sue is also very good um, when there's family situations, people tell them what their situation is like, and particularly the older ones, not the tiny puppies, but she's very good at being able to match that dog with that family. So, for instance, if it's a dog that, you know, they need, to be around children, um, or they want a high energy dog, or they, or they want a dog that's that's quite low energy, happy to plod about. Sue's very good at matching, you know, she really does read the dogs well and know the dogs, um, and that's very useful. Um, but, but as I said initially, I think no matter where you adopt a dog from, for that dog, you're changing his life. The dog that I'm going to rescue is Star. She was found in a bin, I think, for about four weeks old with her sisters and brothers. So tiny, we didn't think she was going to make it. There's been a few occasions where Sue thought she was going to die because she kept collapsing. Because they're in a neat wave at the moment and the dog's just, it's not good. It's too hot for them. They've had no mother's supplements from the milk or anything, so... Uh, but luckily she's pulled through, so she's done so much hard work with her and her brothers and sisters, giving them honey. Would you believe honey? But it does work and she's pulled through and hopefully I'll get her soon. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Unfortunately I have to report that the adorable puppy star who was coming home to Lisa didn't make it and has sadly passed away along with some of her siblings. Apparently they had some inherited liver problem. It was awfully sad for them. Back in April of this year, saw one of Sue's greatest success stories, that of Hope. This is her story. A local woman found Hope laying at the side of the road after having been hit by a car three or four days earlier. She contacted Sue on Facebook, who immediately went out to find her, and she was absolutely devastated by what she saw. The poor dog was starving, dehydrated, covered in fleas and ticks. She'd got a weeping eye. But worst of all, she had a mutilated front leg. The dog had just given up, you could see by the look in her eyes. Sue took her home and cleaned her up and gave her something to eat and gave her some painkiller, settled her down for the night. And you know, the morning after, the dog got up and she was limping about with her front leg tucked underneath it. Sue took her to the vet the morning after, who gave her treatment for all of her problems. And Sue then built her up with some good food so that she was strong enough to go through with an operation to amputate her leg. And within a week, she was healed and running about and playing with the other dogs. And it was as if she knew that she'd been saved. And just two weeks later, Hope was adopted. And she's now living in the UK with a lovely family, along with their other dog that they adopted from Sue just a year ago. Just look at these pictures to see how she's settling in. Looks like she's going to have a wonderful life. Well, sadly, that brings us to the end of this week's show. So join me next time when I'll be talking to three radio and television presenters who tell me what it's really like to work in the media industry. You won't want to miss it. See you next time. <laughs>